So I've had three days off since legs. Uh, I'm gonna do calves and I'm gonna do full upper body today. Uh, I've done this before, I've tried again. Um, in my head, I kinda like how it's gonna play out, but let's just get into it and kinda see what's gonna happen. So, chest first. I would say if you, if you can bench over, I mean, 250, 275s, and then maybe you can go straight to 45s, but I like to warm up with the quarters first and then go 45. I'd rather split the reps in half and do a couple reps of each. And when it comes to how long you wait in between warm-up sets, obviously, I don't think you need five minutes. It's not that stressful. Um, <clears throat> maybe you can take a little bit longer for the last warm-up before the heaviest set, just to kind of get mentally ready for it. But I'm taking it anywhere from a minute to a minute and a half, probably. I found a new song. I'm going to be playing it for my top set, Superman by Eminem. I know it's been out for a while, I just haven't come across it. I'm going to do one more warm-up with... Uh, Whatever this is. All right, let's just, uh, let's see how many reps I can get this for. Yes. There's nine. Oh yeah. There's two more than last time. Pretty sure. So now I'm gonna increase the angle to 15 degrees or to 30 and uh, more upper chest. That's what we're trying to do here. So I had to take off all the fucking weight just to make sure the, because uh, when you, you, you increase the angle, it changes the bar path a little bit. So I had to take all of it off, just try it out and then throw it back on. Rest times are probably four, I would say four minutes probably. I'm kind of just waiting until I feel ready. I'm not timing it. Just feel like I get this, this readiness and this urge to do the next set. So that's how I'm gauging that.
Oh. Oh. Try to get that last one. Would have been nice to have a spot, but I still drove into it as hard as I could, and I uh, I recruited everything in that in that weight that wasn't even moving, but I was pushing as hard as possible into it. Chest done. Do some back now. It's snowing pretty good right now here in uh, where I'm at, and I like to wear no shoes. And I just stepped in fucking water. I guess that's what I just deserve for taking my shoes off when it's snowing out. But fuck it, whatever. If I go through enough pain here, I'll just forget my socks are even wet. I think that's a good strategy. All right, I'm gonna move on to this pull down. Same, uh, same concepts here. Gonna put on the neutral grip couple warm-ups and then all out set. Hundred pounds. I'm gonna go up to one fifty. Even though I haven't warmed up my back yet, I kind of have with the uh, with the pressing. I can just tell the motion feels smooth, um, and that's how I'm gauging how I'm only probably gonna do two warm ups. If it didn't feel right, I would do three probably. See how it goes. My reps got pretty high with 180, so I think I'm actually gonna go it goes to 195. But come on, I gotta go. I gotta do this. 200. And if the dumbbell falls off, then fuck it. 195. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Done there. I'm not going to do better in a row. I'm going to let my spine heal a little bit. I'm going to do the uh, supported row. Outside handles for more upper back. Development. Much too light. Just one warm up feeler set. I like to do lats first because when I do upper back first, it feels like my lats have more tendency to take over. So I like to do lats first, like mainly lats, and then I'll finish off the upper back. Mm. 
throw in a 25 on. All right, let's fucking send this. All right, moving on to this uh, side lateral machine. Just all out, nothing really too complicated on this. I don't think I'm gonna do any partials. No crazy fucking partials on this shit. One thing that I think I've understood is don't over warm up once you're done with your first exercise. The body's pretty warm once you've done an all out set of something. So just one kind of feeler set. Uh, I might not even have to do a warm up. I'm just doing it just to make sure everything feels okay, but. I did some partials. <sighs> Definitely feeling the fatigue right now. I trained a lot of people the last couple of days and I think it is affecting me a little bit. I mean, when you stand for like nine hours a day, eventually it kind of Fatigues you a little bit, but still doing. I mean, I did the most reps I ever did on the on the chest, uh, the incline. So I don't think it really is fatiguing me that much. If it was, my incline would go to complete shit. My pull downs were good. Just the the sets on the chest fatigue me. Yeah. So hit up some. Uh, I don't know yet. I just got triceps and biceps to do now. 
about 45 minutes into the workout. All right, I lied. I gotta do this rear delt exercise first and then do dip and then probably a straight bar. Probably a straight bar curl. I'm, uh, I don't even think I'm gonna warm up for this. I'm plenty warmed up, plenty fatigued. I just wanna get this set done with. Done on this. Tricep, bicep. Smoked. Definitely smoked right now. All right, no warm up, just straight into it. See what happens. Done there. I could do bicep and then uh, I gotta do some calves too. I think I've come to a realization that like 30 minute workouts are kind of the sweet spot for me. Any more than that, I start to get just too fatigued when it comes to this style of training. Just all out. I mean, combination of already being fatigued, I think a little bit from the, uh, all the standing that I've been doing, training people. But uh, I mean, at some point you have to train. I mean, if you're always trying to get it absolutely perfect, maybe you won't even end up fucking training. Unless you've, uh, set out like a perfect schedule so you can recover and then uh, then train. But anyway, still feeling pretty good. Good sets. Very happy with the incline press that I did. Um, we'll do, uh, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what I end up doing. Maybe just a standard straight bar curl. So scratch that idea. I, uh, I'm gonna do this, this barbell preacher curl just because my, my legs are kind of fatigued. I just want to get off my feet. So I'm just gonna do a uh, supported uh, preacher curl here instead of the, uh, the barbell curl. Whenever you put weight on your spine like that, there is a, a different type of fatigue. Well, I guess you, good way to explain it, it's like doing a leg press versus a heavy squat. When you, when you spine load like that, or like a deadlift, it's very fatiguing. At least that's my thought process on it. So I'm gonna do this one instead of putting uh, weight on my spine. 
Let's roll these sleeves up and uh, see what they look like. Now I know that doing an upper lower split for me is not what I prefer. I think I prefer doing legs. I mean, even legs on its own is brutal. And then push, pushing calves, and then back rear delt bicep. I think that's kind of the sweet spot. But Still gotta finish this off. I'm just gonna do this, uh, this set of calves on this. I'm not gonna do this seated today. I can kind of instinctively tell when my calves are burnt out on certain exercises. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but to me it kind of does. I've been hammering out those seated. And this is a relatively newer exercise for me, so. And my clavicle is kind of fucked up from the, uh, I think it was from that supported row that I did. You want to get a stretch on that, but I think I maybe overdid it, which is right up my alley for what I do. I think I did 17 plates on this last time, so that was 11. Now I'm gonna go up to 15. It's been about, it's been a little over an hour, which is just not, not my preference. But the good news is that now I know. Now I know my preference. Thought it was a good idea. Uh, and it wasn't a bad idea, it was just, now I understand. And I can go into my next workouts with knowing that's 100% what I want to do, the split wise. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna do 18 on this, I think. It's feeling good. I think I also wanna add in a shoulder press, potentially. Um, I mean, my shoulders haven't shrunk at all. They still get stimulated, obviously, but like from my pressing stuff, but I feel like, I don't know. Like my, I mean, they get stimulated on the pressing, but I'm not like mentally connecting to my shoulders as if I was doing shoulder press. So they're getting stimulated, but I don't know, I kind of, I mean, I still train my triceps even though they get stimulated on pressing, you know? I feel like that's kind of the same thing. I would never just press a tricep. I'd want to do some type of, I mean, at least one isolation for my tricep. Same thing for my bicep. It gets worked obviously on every back exercise, but 
I'm not connecting to it like I would on like the preacher curl that I just did. All right, one set on this and then done. <clears throat> Oh, 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 holy shit. All right, done here. So I think I'm gonna name this video, Finding the Perfect Split. I've been on a journey to try and figure out what really is the right way to build the most amount of muscle for the way I like to train, which is um, what I found to be a minimal number of sets, as many reps as you possibly can do, and potentially a, a hold at the end, um, or, or a couple partials. That's how I like to get the most out of each set, and when I do it like that, I really can't do much more than, I mean, two sets per body part seems to be a sweet spot. Maybe I can get it over three, but um, two is what I kind of found to be the number. It feels like you're going to be shrinking uh, on day number three off. <laughs> uh, it seems almost a little bit ridiculous to train and then take three days off and then train again <laughs> and then take three days off. But just from my own experience and listening to Dorian Yates and Mike Menster and those people of the hit uh, community, whatever we want to call it, that's what uh, they seem to think as well. Um, so I've tried to train more. It doesn't work for me. Um, and I'm sure everybody out there is is like me. I'm not superior genetics or whatever, just regular, regular dude for the most part. Um, but I feel like I've been able to develop a decent amount of muscle um, due to figuring out a good training split that I like, that I can stick to, and a, a routine that I can push very hard every time I come into the gym. There's no wasted sessions. So today was a confirmation, I think, that I, I like the, the legs. Legs is tough, but the chest, shoulder, tricep, calves, perfect combo, back, rear delts, bicep, perfect combo. Um, and training every eight to like 11 days, uh, each body part. I mean, it, it sounds like it's a long time and it feels like you're shrinking after day five. But, um, if I come in here on day six or seven, if I'm training every other day, let's say, I will be fatigued and I won't be uh, super desiring to lift and that's a sign that you're overtrained a bit. Um, I know there's a bunch of shit out there on no such thing as overtraining, but I mean, there's a difference between a bodybuilding workout to build muscle and a Navy SEAL test where they're trying to kill you. That's going to be way harder than a bodybuilding workout, at least in my head. You're probably going to be way more fatigued, but that's not the, the best path to hypertrophy. You want to take the fastest road. 
to be the biggest she can get. Genetics is going to be a limiting factor. Sure. But you want to get there as fast as you can um, and as efficiently as can. As efficiently as you can. So, I mean, why would I do six sets for back when I could do two sets and get more out of it? Common sense. Do less. Um, for me, I find less is more. So, again, I've tried to do more sets. I've tried to follow the wave of, you know, 10 sets, whatever, somewhere around there. But for me, it's too much. Um, I think I'm just putting way too much stress on my body for no reason. It's just extra stress. Once the signal is sent, once I do my all out set on lap pull downs for as many reps as I can do with perfect, um, you know, driven down lap peak contraction, resist on the way up, get the stretch, drive back down. Once I do that for as many reps as I can, a little bit of control on the way up for that last negative, that's, um, that's sent the signal for for um, the, the stimulus to, bul to build more tissue or to reserve tissue when you're dieting down in body weight. When you're dieting down, it's uh, not the best environment to be building muscle. Maybe you could do it, I don't really know, but the key is to hold on to as much strength as you can as you diet back down. And hopefully before that, you went into some phase of increased calories or trying to build your strength up somehow. Um, so if you're dieting all the time, it's going to be difficult to try and build up your strength. So just get to a body weight that you feel that you can perform at your highest. If you want to go a little bit above that, uh, I think it's fine as long as you just don't uh, become a fat fucking whale, you know? I mean, if you got, if you got, if you can hold on to a nice chunk on, on, your, on the side of your stomach here, um, it's probably time to clean it up a little bit. Uh, if you don't really care, I mean, it's not gonna hurt your performance probably, unless you get way too fat, then it might. Um, but um, that's pretty much what I've discovered so far. So I think I'm gonna do my legs, three days off probably, and then do my, two to three days off after each training session. I think that's kind of uh, what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to play it by ear. If I feel ready on the third day, I'll train. If I'm not, I'm going to try my best to not train. So, um, on that third day, when I'm, when I'm trying to uh, resist the urge to go, um, and I know I'm not ready, but for some reason I want to go, uh, I'm going to tell myself, or try to tell myself, that... Uh, I'm in the, the most vital place right now for building tissue or reserving the tissue. You first gotta recover, and then after that, then you can grow. So if you train again, uh, before you've, so like let's say you, you you're, this is the line where you were before the workout, you went to here uh, after the workout, and then if you only get back to there again, and then you train that body part again, let's say, um, You'll never, you'll never super compensate and, and, and get this type of effect and be bigger and bigger each time. You're just going to recover, oh, break down again. You sent the signal, but you just didn't rest enough. The resting is so key. That's what I've, I finally have confirmed. I've always known that. I just wasn't able to put it into practice because I wanted to just train, you know, seven days in a row, 14 days in a row, whatever, you know. Um, but... I guess you gotta you gotta determine whether you want progress or do you want do you want to just be in the gym, you know? Um, but I'm totally okay with being just training, you know, two three times a week um, if my progress is great. And every time I come in here, it's phenomenal. That's more important to me, I think. When I'm seeing progress, if I didn't see progress, I wouldn't do it. I'd go back to the other way, other way. But I'm seeing more progress, and I'm the strongest I've ever been. That's the key thing. So, um, I saw a post by trained by JP, and he said, he said something like, "Let this be the year 
that you don't ask for permission to try a new split. So this is what I'm gonna do, I think. I'm just gonna black out all the noise and train a body part much less frequently than everyone else and much less volume. At least from my own perception of how often people train twice a week body part, 10 sets uh, each time they train it, that type of thing. Um, I'm gonna see if this, uh, this works. And um, I mean, you're definitely not gonna shrink. So I'll give it a try and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see, um, I mean, I've already experienced better results from doing it. Um, but let's see where, let's see where the recovery line kind of ends. I mean, at some point I'm recovered and you gotta train again. So once you're here, you train, get broken down, recover, super compensate. If you've trained hard enough and sent the signal, eventually that adaptation will go back to what it was before if you don't send that signal again. So it's about finding that sweet spot for you. Everybody has different um, recovery abilities. Some people can do double the amount of sets, especially if you're using some uh, performance enhancing drugs. If you're not, then you gotta do less. 